let's talk about bonds issued at a premium. Recall that bonds is basically borrowing money from investors or bondholders. In this example, feel free to take a picture or screen capture it. We have Turtle Corporation. It issued a $1 million bond for five years. The coupon rate is 10%. The interest is paid semi-annually. And the market rate is 8%. We're going to be calculating the selling price of the bond. We're also going over the journal entry for the issuance of the bond. And finally, the journal entry to record the interest paid every six months for the bond. Now, before we get to the formula or the calculations themselves, it's important to compare the coupon rate, coupon rate, with the market rate. So currently, the coupon rate is 10%. Let's assume we're Turtle Corporation. So our coupon rate is 10%, and the market rate, which is everyone else offering their bonds, is at 8%. Notice that we offer a greater rate of return to the bondholder. In this case, our bond will be issued or sold at a premium. This is important to note because your answer or the selling or issue price of the bond is going to be greater than $1 million. In other words, because it's issued at a premium, we could sell our bond for more than $1 million. All right, let's get to the formula required to calculate the issue or selling price of the bond. I break these up into three steps. And these three steps uh, deal with present value calculations. I'm going to assume you know uh, a little bit of knowledge about present value. But in short, present value is restating a future value amount into today's values, or a future dollar amount into today's dollar values. The first step we're going to present value the principal. The principal is the amount that you borrowed. So we're going to take the principal amount, the amount you borrowed, times the table factor. Please note that the principal amount will always be what's stated on the bond contract. In this case, it's going to be the million dollars. The table factor here is the present value of a lump sum. The second step is to present value the interest payments. The interest payments is what you have to pay the bondholders periodically. It's the cost to borrow the money or their money. Here it's very simple to step one. You're going to take the interest payments and multiply it by a table factor. You're going to use a different table in this case, and the table is the present value of an annuity table. So please be very careful when you're calculating these present values, as you may use the wrong table. But we'll get into that when we go over the calculations. In the third step, you're simply going to combine the present value of the principal and the present value of the interest payments. Because in the third step, we're actually going to calculate the issue price, also called the selling price, of the bond. Now, don't get confused on those terms, issue and selling price. We're really trying to find out how much money we're going to borrow. So, again, it's the present value of the principal plus the present value of the interest payments. And that will give you your issue price, selling price of the bond. Okay, now that you know the formulas required for the present value calculations, let's get into calculating the bond issue and selling price. The first thing you want to do is set up your principal and interest payment amounts. The principal is easy because that is what's stated on the bond contract. In this case, it's a million dollars. Next, we're going to consider the interest payments. The interest payments, you have to calculate what they are every six months in this example because it says semi-annually. First, you're going to take your $1 million. Then, you're going to multiply that by the coupon rate. And then divide by 2. This setup is very important. More 
specifically multiplying by the coupon rate. So always use the coupon rate, which is 10% in this case, when you calculate the interest payments. Do not use the market rate. All right, let's get into our three steps. The first step is to present value the principal. The principal is the million dollars. First, we have to figure out the number of periods. The bond is for five years, but since it's paying interest every six months, you have to multiply that by two. So really, the number of periods is 10. Next, we figure out the interest. Here, you use the market rate, which is 8%. You must divide by two because the stated uh, rate of 8%, that's a yearly percentage. And since we're paying interest every six months, you must divide by two. So that will give you 4%. So the number of periods is 10, and the interest is 4%. You're going to take that million dollars and multiply by a table factor. Let's go to the table. That million dollars is a future amount, one future amount in the future. So that's a single future amount. Now you take your number of periods and your percentage, which is 10 periods and 4%. You find them on the table, and there you are. That's your table factor right there. 0.6756. We're going to go back to the million dollars and we're going to multiply that table factor by the million dollars. 1 million times 0 0.6756 will give you $675,600. Now let's go to step two. Step two is present valuing the interest payments or the interest payment every six months. Remember, these are future amounts. These are periodic payments every six months in this particular problem. Since you already figured out the number of periods and the interest in step one, we simply transfer that over to step two. So we have 10 periods and the interest is 4%. Now, our interest payments is $50,000 every six months. We're going to multiply that by the table factor. Again, be careful here that you don't use the wrong table. Here, you're going to use the present value factor for an ordinary annuity. Annuity means equal periodic payments. All right, so there's our 4% and our 10 periods. We come across and down, and we get the table factor of 8.1109. Go back here, and we're going to multiply that table factor by the $50,000 interest payment, so 8.1109. That will give us $405,545. And there you have it, present value of the principal and present value of the interest payment. Now, on to our final step, step three. This is where you'll calculate your issue or selling price of the bond. Assuming you correctly found the present value of the principal and the present value of the interest payments in steps one and two, this should be pretty easy. So we're going to combine the present value of the principal and the present value of the interest payments. The present value of the principal is $675,600. And then the present value of the interest payments is $405,545. Again, that will give us our selling price of the bond. How much you're going to borrow. In this case, we get $1,081,000. $145. That is our selling price of our bond. This essentially is the amount that we're going to borrow from bondholders. I know that the bond contract says $1 million, but since we're offering a higher return, bet a better return than the market, then we're going to borrow much more. Now that we have our calculations, and now that we have our selling price of our bond, let's get into the journal entries that are required to issue the bond, and the journal entry that's required to record interest payments every six months. All right, the first journal entry we'll do is the issuance of the bond. 
Remember, the issuance of the bond implies that you are borrowing money. So when you're borrowing money, you want to debit cash. Cash, we already have that amount. That is what we just calculated, which is the $1,081,145. So cash is $1,081,145. I'm going to skip a line momentarily, and we're going to go to our second credit, which is bonds payable. This amount comes from the bond contract. In this case, it's the million dollars. If you notice, the debits and credits do not equal, and we need more credits. So our first credit is premium on bonds payable. And it's going to be the difference between uh, the cash value and the bond payable value. It will be $81,145. Now let's go over the journal entry that needs to be made every six months, because the interest in this particular example is going to be paid semi-annually, which means twice a year. Interest expense is the account that you want to debit for the interest amount. And the interest amount in this case is our $50,000. Secondly, since you are paying out interest, you want to credit cash for also $50,000. And there you have it. The journal entries for issuing a bond and recording the interest for that bond.